Hey all, welcome to Rainy Days Podcast number three. And uh, we have a really special guest today. Uh, they're all special, but uh, Nancy Wilson, uh, the Wilson Sisters of Heart. And uh, I grew up being a big fan of their music and them. And um, just real trailblazers in the Seattle music community and great people. So we had a nice long chat about all things uh, music, guitars, Eddie Van Halen, I think, her new record. Uh, which is awesome. You should check it out. And uh, just kind of touch base about what it means to grow up in the Pacific Northwest, their first show on Vashon Island. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was really great. But I was a little shy. I was like, oh, it's Nancy Wilson. Um, whoops. This is me st oh, standing in my field. There's, there's Penny. There we go. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, uh, so the only thing maybe as ubiquitous as heart in the Northwest is this weather, which we have up here, the gray. And uh, so I'm out, outstanding in my field, as they say today. So enjoy the podcast. Uh, Danny Newcomb Music is the website. And let me know what you think. Well, I'm Danny Newcomb. It's a pleasure to have Nancy Wilson here today. Uh, it's a big honor. Um, I think the first time that I might have met you in person was in uh, 1978 when Mike and I were waiting at Peaches Records and Tapes. Um, oh, wow. That was when Dog and Butterfly came out, yeah, a while ago. Wow. I actually found a picture <laughs> of you and Anne, and you're holding a baby behind the counter at Peaches Records and Tapes. Uh, wow, what was that all about? I think somebody put it in their high school newspaper. Yeah, it was probably a, somebody with a baby that that was at the record signing and said, "Take a picture with my baby." <laughs> you know, for, I think so. so I'll have this for the rest of his life, kind of a thing. I it wasn't it. my baby, <laughs> or mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but but that was way back, and then I think the next time was after Pearl Jam and kind of hit, and then Mike called you up and had you come in and. Uh, uh, you did a river wide for the Rockford's project in 99. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. It was a great song. I remember Mike and I could never quite figure out those. Uh, you did a couple of chords in there that were like Paul Simon chords. And we we're like, what is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I think that was, and then I saw you at uh, the uh, music cares benefit. Yeah. We did a few things like that along the way in the, in, you know, the circle, the Seattle circles, they always, they always connect. I like to brag about Seattle because I love Seattle. Um, it just proves to you that that this is a music community and it doesn't have an industry feel at all. It's it's a community of friends and people supporting each other. It's not a competitive kind of a Hollywood vibe at all. Right, right. Has it, has it been that way for a long time? I mean, when you were coming up? Yeah. I mean, we came up. We, uh, it was the World's Fair, you know, when, when we moved to Seattle. And we, they were building the Space Needle at the time. And uh, the, the Whalers were going on and, you know, um, the Sonics, Paul Revere and the Raiders, you know, Mary Lee and the Turnabouts. Even back then, we were really proud about the music of Seattle because, you know, Ray Charles... Quincy Jones. And, Quincy Jones. And, of course, there's Jimi Hendrix. Of course, there's Jimi Hendrix. And now he's... I guess he's got a statue there now. So, you know, it's a, it's just a real solid music city. One of the things that I noticed, um, and you kind of forget when you grow up in an era, like growing up in the the quota, thanks Mark Arm grunge era, you sort of forget what has gone before. And, you know, uh, heart and sort of the, the rock scene um, was a huge part of, you know, my music growing up. But there, before us, there was the folk scene, too, and that was huge. I mean, the Brothers yeah. Four were really huge, too. That's right. Um, were you yeah. at all aware of that, like, when you were a kid? Um, yeah, we were aware of the folk music scene at the time because there were, you know, the Four Seasons and all the, those classic sort of rootsy harmony parts and Peter, Paul, and Mary, and we had those albums at home, and we sang along with them and learned how to play all that stuff you know we learned oh, you did yeah the great mandela and you know we we learned um too much of nothing and we learned a lot of the stuff that is kind of de derived in some ways from like the dylan-esque sort of uh boxcar willie kind of era the dust bowl generation before so yeah that was really a stylistically a very clear-cut um 
type of music, but it led pretty naturally into rock, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I find that too. I mean, I'm a huge uh, Dylan fan, Billy Bragg fan, um, Paul Westerberg fan. Oh yeah, Um, me too. Right. That whole through line with the, you know, the people (laughs) who can't really sing, but write a great song within the canon of, you know, right. that, um, that Roots Americana music. I love that. It's so yeah, great. Westerberg, we call him Gramps. You know, he's, <laughs> he's kind of an old crank at times. Yeah, but, so good. But, but such a good, you know, great artist. Yeah. Here Comes yeah. a Regular is so great. All those songs are so oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so that kind of segues into one thing that I was thinking about. I, I was reading uh, Charles Cross's book. <laughs> Uh, that you do with, with them, and um, yeah. there were a lot of a lot of fun points in there, like never having a house plant when you were growing up because your family moved so much <laughs> and things like right. that. Like, really? Yeah, um, right. But I was thinking about how much film and music collide. You know, when they make a scene, when there's a cultural shift. You know, there's that. Um, uh, they're usually going in tandem. And especially when they're breaking a new sound, you know, you can go like Goodwill Hunting with Elliot Smith. I wondered what you had to say about singles and how that whole thing happened. Because, I mean, I know there was already a musical movement here, but it was very tied into that culturally. Yeah, the movie Singles um, was kind of a great moment when uh, my ex, Cameron Crowe, um, who has incredible ears and has, you know, has is always listening, always figuring out what the next thing is going to be. So he started to hear that those guys in Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, and he knew that was the next because we were coming out of the eighties. Don't forget. Oh, and I they, remember. <laughs> the nineties was such a refreshing change from the eighties. I got to say, it was you know we were we were done with the eighties, and so this was this fresh new sound with these Seattle players, Seattle bands that made a, made all the difference to us as music people who kind of escaped from LA to make this film in Seattle with these great, you know, bands. And, and it was, it was a cool film. It turned into a really cool film. Um, and yeah, like, my dog's in it. and you know. <laughs> <laughs> But do you feel like you had uh, a personal role to play in that, like helping to introduce Cameron to the music up here and sort of facilitating that movie coming about in general? Well, no, I think he was kind of the discoverer, you know, of all of that uh, before I ever was, even though it was from Seattle. But I've been on the road forever, you know, forever. And so I, I was <laughs> amazed, like reading through that book about your touring schedule. I just couldn't, you know, but the amount of touring that you and your sister did, I mean, through the 80s was incredible. Yeah, it was kind of inhumane yeah, in many right. ways. <laughs> um, because, you know, it was huge video fuels, you know, video, the, the video imaging was the engine that was driving those big tours at big stadiums and huge outdoor events, sporting events, basically, you know, so the humanity of who you were on a stage was really a challenge. Like, how do I emote or how do I feel a personal connection to the sea of faces? You know, I remember seeing uh, Mick Jagger at the kingdom and him wearing this crazy bright yellow outfit. And I was like, (laughs) I know why he's wearing that because you would be able to see him. Yeah, I mean, he's just a speck is so far yeah. away. You can spot him from <laughs> yeah. the third relay tower. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. There was a quote from, um, that was also part of your book about how everything changed when the video started coming out. There was a Stan Lynch talked to um, work with our band for a little bit. And he was talking about how, when uh, uh, MTV started happening, and I think it was the video they made for you got lucky. And they're on that sort of desert set. And he was saying, up until that point, you've been able to go out to a restaurant, out to the gym. But after that video came out, yeah. you couldn't go anywhere. Like it was oh, just, it changed everything. It did change everything. We we had to get bodyguards, you know. Oh my gosh. There were um, people in the hallways guarding the halls because fans would get into the uh, hotels and go up in every floor and scan floors. It also was like when somebody asked me, um, you know, are your boobs real? You know, I'm like, right. what? Um, <laughs> or, or like, do you actually play the guitar? Yeah. Or is right. it just a prop? 
And I'm like, what? So, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then you're kind of like, well, why am I doing this? And, and what sort of yeah. commodity am I? But yeah. Yeah. Commodity is the word. That's a good word for it. talking at you because I'm going to start a new subscription thing on my website. It's called The Homestead and um, it's been a crazy couple of years and things have opened up a little bit and they'll probably open up more next spring uh, for more shows and more communication but I wanted to find a way to get some of the music out that I've been working on um, in a way that isn't just broadcasting at people over social media. So I've decided to do a subscription service um, it's called The Homestead through my website, Any Newcomb Music. And if you sign up, you get uh, outtakes, you get songs that are recorded over the past year, um, as well as some behind the scenes. I'll be working on songs and sharing things like that. Um, I don't know about the farm picks. We'll have to see about that. The animals just won't cooperate. Uh, but um, just wanted to have be able to have a conversation and one that was not... Uh, dictated by Facebook. So if you're interested in hearing um, unreleased material or getting released unreleased material before it's released, um, sort of a preview of it all um, and some benefits for signing up, you get perks, but those are, you'll find out about those on my website. Anyways, thanks for supporting me. Thanks for listening to my music. And if you're interested, please sign up, um, support the arts and stay well. Well, and that was one of the things I really liked reading about your um, your early days is it felt really Northwest to me. It felt very DIY. It felt like you released this hit record through a very small Canadian label. Yeah. So you didn't have to go through all of the, um, you know, uh, the Motown sort of, you know, look or have all that stuff created. You weren't brought yeah. up as a female band. You know, it wasn't like the Runaways yeah. or something like that. You had That's the opportunity really music first. We didn't have a sexual identity when we first started because we were kids. We played at the Sunset Drive-In one time. We played at churches. We played at schools. You know, we played a lot of living rooms. It was before that there was an identity instilled in our, us ourselves that we couldn't just be tomboys like we started out, you know. Right. And so for me, I was channeling, you know, John Lennon, and I was channeling Jimmy Page, and I was channeling... Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder. She was channeling um, Robert Plant. So you have chops. I mean, you're great players, <laughs> great performers, and um, there's there's nothing else. You know, there's we not. Just that. Wanted, we really wanted to prove something about being confident and being women without thinking about gender, the gender of it all. You know, too much. Just the equality of it was our, what we were interested in. So, and I think that worked pretty well. <laughs> I think it worked exceptionally well. Um, there was a great quote from you um, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Um, in music, everybody's everybody's equal, you know, while the music's playing, everybody's, everybody's equal. And I thought that was really a great perspective to take. You know, if you see yourself as a musician first. Yeah, well, I think it's bigger than we are. You know, music is, it's, much bigger than one person is. Um, it speaks to, well, I always like to talk about this, but it's, it's, a, it's a cellular memory that music imprints into in your body and all your cells. So it's the last thing anybody who's leaving the earth, when all their systems shut, are shutting down, music is still the last thing to exist in their physiology, in their memory, in their physical memory. Part of that, the Beatles thing, I mean, I'm a Beatles head, and I know you are too, but oh, for sure. them including, you know, like Golden Slumbers and all the nursery rhymes in there is those, the cadence of those songs that we grow up with, especially as little kids, those stay, you know, that's, that's, that's deeply encoded genetic stuff. 
indelible stuff. Well, the record <laughs> the record sounds great. I um Thanks. I was really um really surprised to hear you uh, sing some poppier stuff. <laughs> The in between. The in between. Yeah, I love <laughs> that track. This it's is a sort great of a track. power pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, your yeah. voice sounds sublime. It sounds great oh, in it. it. Sounds really great. good. I have yeah. fun singing more. I, I always wanted to sing more, and not. I mean, in heart, you know, you're just standing next to one of the world's greatest. Rock oh my singers. gosh, so good. So yeah. it's hard to be confident as a singer in the context of the band Heart, but. Uh, doing my own thing it was like oh well you know i'll just tell the story i won't belabor it or try to feel be perfect with it you know um and that's how it worked out better for me to not try not to compare myself you know ann wilson herself actually once um advised me that I, when i was in the studio struggling with some vocal part she goes you're trying to be perfect don't try to be perfect don't try to be perfect on your pitch or your phrasing, whatever it is. Just tell the story. Just simply tell a story. And I was like, oh. And it takes the heat out the performance. You're thinking about yeah. the words. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So right. That, I always took that, you know, one to heart. <laughs> it's hard to believe that you hadn't released a, your solo record before this, um, that you've yeah. been playing so long. But I guess it's just a matter of having the time and not being on tour yeah. and all that not being on tour when you're playing every night pretty much and then you go home for a short spell usually with us um because you can't afford to stay home for very long and so then you want to rest your fingers and you want to rest you know your singing voice and you just want to do other things so this time it was a it was like it was a forced vacation in certain ways finding the good finding the joy inside the greater you know challenge of it all but are you planning on touring for this record i mean it seems like things are opening up a little bit well it's opening up a little there's an offer live nation on the table for 2022 and so just trying to pound out the details on that you know like i wouldn't be adverse to another round you know another uh, trip around the states you know or maybe Europe. Right. As a solo actor, as, as, as hard. hard. Yeah. As hard. Okay. okay. Because people know and love those songs and yeah, um, they do. the familiarity of those songs, you know, they, it lives. And so, you know, I would, I'm going to do uh, a show with the Seattle symphony though, at the end of, of October. I heard about that. That's amazing. At Ben Arroyo. Yeah. Hall, and which is such a good room. Oh my God. Oh yeah beautiful room and um, and uh, it'll be good to do a couple of heart songs I have a singer from Seattle Shaina Shepherd so she's gonna help me out with that stuff and uh, do some of the new things and some of the big heart songs too okay so, so it'll be a mixture forward. of your solo stuff as well yeah, she'll be doing crazy on you and <laughs> Barracuda. Wow, you that's know. some big that's some big songs to, what about yeah. love yeah yeah so yeah big yeah big big 10 ton songs <laughs> <laughs> so do you uh, normally do these dreams when you perform yeah, oh yeah we'll be yeah, doing yeah. That. well that's great i heard that uh carrie brownstein's working with you guys a little bit oh yeah she wrote a really cool script for the heart film oh so it's a film it's a for a film it's a oh great it's not a biopic it's a film okay with you know characters depicting the younger versions of me and Anne. Oh, interesting. And they're they're casting for it right now. I haven't heard much lately, but I'm excited for that. And uh, you know, I've I've volunteered to score the film for myself. But I like scoring music. I like scoring films. Well thank you for talking, Nancy. Well it's, it's so good. It's, I really appreciate it. Yeah. That's um yeah, um send my love along to all my pals there in uh, the greater Northwest area. I will. And I uh, will. yeah, it was really fun to talk to you. I love talking about Seattle and music and all of these lovely connections we've all got together. Well, 
And the more I talk to people doing this podcast, the more I see that. And as a musician growing up, I knew my circles, but I yeah. didn't know the other people's circles. And hearing how, you know, Hart uh, befriended, you know, a lot of the up and coming yeah. people in the early 90s really made a huge difference in the music culture uh, yeah. that exists now. Yeah, it's really. It's amazing. We all intersected really easily. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Really cool. Well, as you say, the, the music's bigger than any one person. So, yeah. Right. It's a through line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers to you. Well, cheers and take care and stay Congra well. Congrats on the record. Thank you so much, Danny. She was all the things that I can't